This is News 8 This Morning. Uh, the case of the Mondays for some <laughs> people here, right? Yeah, that's how it goes. But you know what? It's Monday. We got yep. the start of the week here. It was a gorgeous week in that. Uh, it mm -hmm. was just so nice to get out to the beach. I love these nice, calm, cool temperatures oh, that we've yeah. been having. But that heat up we know is on the way. And I think the beach will be your BFF by the end of the week because, yeah, it's going to get really hot. Uh, the next couple of days, though, enjoy yeah. what we have. We're going to see pretty mild weather out here. So the beach we'll is always that. our BFF. Oh, All right, yeah. let's get to, right to our headlines here. And then we'll have more on our forecast here in a moment. The race for the coronavirus vaccine, it's on. And today, researchers begin the next phase of a study on a possible vaccine at UC San Diego. News 8's Teresa Sardina live with a closer look this morning on why the study is being considered historic, how you can even take part in this. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, and according to UCSD Health, this cl clinical trial began mid-March, and so this is one of the first universities and facilities to even begin a trial for a vaccine for COVID-19, and researchers are looking for 500 San Diegans to join the effort. So today, the joint trial will begin, and excuse me, and this is uh, begins by the drug maker Moderna and the National Institutes of Health testing a promising vaccine and 30,000 people nationwide. Locally, UC San Diego is looking to recruit people over 65 with underlying conditions, essential frontline workers and people of color, especially those in the South Bay. UC San Diego is hoping to have all local participants line up with 60 days. Some of those selected will get the vaccine in two doses. Others will get a placebo and everyone will then be monitored for the next two years years. This is a really exciting opportunity for those of us in San Diego who have been so impacted by COVID-19. And locally, anytime we hear about a vaccine for COVID-19, it is comforting. If you'd like to participate in the trial, we'll have that information at CBS8.com. I'll send it back to you. Yeah, interesting here. See what happens with that. Teresa, thank you very much. Let's take a look now at where the coronavirus numbers are across our county. Local health officials reporting 283 new cases, bringing the countywide total now to just near 27,000. That means cases have doubled in the past month. This time in June, we were at 13,000 cases. No new deaths reported at that last check, so the number of deaths still remains at 533 people. We do have a bit of good news here. Our 14-day rolling average of positive tests is now down to 5.6%. And today, we may know how much money Congress has in mind to help Americans stay afloat through this pandemic. Yeah, the Senate is expected to unveil details on a second stimulus check. However, even after the Senate makes their proposal official, it could still be weeks before a deal can be made. The upper limit of $1,200 is still the same. However, who qualifies for the bill remains in question. And those who file for unemployment will no longer receive that additional $600 provided by the CARES Act. News 8's Chris Groh joining us live in Sarah Mesa to break down the impact this is having on San Diegans. Yeah, it's a pretty big blow for a lot of people who are counting on that money. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Netta and Eric. Yes, because right now the unemployment check is capped up at $450. So that extra $600 provided by the federal government really helped a lot of San Diegans, a lot of Californians, and also Americans bridge the gap here during the coronavirus pandemic. Many of them no longer able to work due to shutdowns, both in the hospitality sector, the restaurant sector, and even retail. Just a struggle I had to... Uh either reinvent yourself or uh, get some support. And that was Richard Sargis, a San Diegan who, with his wife, had their own limo service. And obviously, that's not able uh, to run right now for obvious reasons. And they needed that extra $600 in their unemployment check in order to help pay their bills and keep a roof over their heads. Now, they're going to have to wait for Congress, as you just heard uh, outlined there, potentially with a new stimulus bill, uh, wait for them to try to get some future funding going here by the federal 
federal government. Right now, what we know in terms of additional unemployment benefits is that House Democrats passed a bill in May that keeps that extra $600 a week going all the way through January. Now, there are also other elements to that bill, but the Democrats want to be able to negotiate it. However, Senate Republicans haven't taken it up. They haven't also passed their own version of the bill because as some of them have laid out, they do not want to see Americans getting more money from unemployment checks than they could potentially get from their own jobs or future jobs. So in the meantime, Sargis and countless others have to find new lines of work to make ends meet. That's where the San Diego Workforce Partnership comes in. The nonprofit has been trying to help countless San Diegans try to find a new career path during this tumultuous time. Many of their services are free or low cost, and it could help clients find new jobs or th in thriving economic sectors, especially amidst a pandemic. There's a lot of great careers out there. IT is certainly in demand, but there's a lot of other great careers. Education is, is in high demand health care work in, in so many uh, in, in this day and age for sure. Now, if you find yourself in the same position as Sargas, as well as other uh, countless Americans, go to our website, cbs8.com. We have a link to the Workforce Partnership Program where you can find information about potentially finding uh, some, new or some new employment during this time. Go to cbs8.com and click on the story link. Netta, Eric. Chris, thank you. Time now for your morning rush. City and school leaders are calling to extend the ban on renter evictions in San Diego. The current protections end on September 30th, and the federal moratorium that protected renters from eviction during the pandemic has expired. Now experts fear a major spike in evictions. Even though here in San Diego the moratorium remains in effect, many renters worry about what happens after it ends. Council President Georgette Gomez says it needs to be extended longer. I do not see us coming out of this by September 30th. Um, so I do foresee another extension and I only hope that my colleagues see the importance of it. Some property owners argue a freeze on evictions cost them and letting months of rent add up is not the solution. Tuesday, Council President Gomez will introduce a proposal to the council that extends the deadline to pay back rent until March of next year. Local minority-owned businesses could get a boost today in the form of a $3 million relief program. Applications are open for a county small business stimulus grant. It's a program headed by Supervisor Nathan Fletcher and the Strategic Alliance to help small businesses, the ones that were uh, underfunded or left out from federal COVID-19 relief. So for information on how to apply to this, visit cbs8.com and just click on the Help button. Also a grant program helping small businesses in Lemon Grove. The city has $650,000 available in federal aid to help city businesses ease the financial impact from coronavirus restrictions. Qualified businesses could get up to $10,000. Also information on how to apply on our website, cbs8.com. Click on that help button again. The period to apply ends August 6th. Some additional races will be kicking off in Del Mar today. The Thoroughbred Club adding a Monday card now to make up for three races that had to be rescheduled because of a COVID-19 outbreak. Races from the other lost days will be made up at another time. All races set for today start at their normal time of 2 p.m. But not everyone is happy about horse racing being back at Del Mar. Protesters stood outside the fairgrounds over the weekend. They've been upset over the treatment of horses at the track and what they call a lack of care about the COVID-19 pandemic. Races from July 17th through the 19th were postponed after 15 jockeys tested positive for coronavirus. Now, in response, the Del Mar Thoroughbred Club put new travel restrictions in place for jockeys and they expanded their quarters. Today at our nation's capital, people will have a chance to say the final goodbyes now to civil rights icon and late Congressman John Lewis. Lewis will lie in state in the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. today and tomorrow, and his casket will be brought to the state capitol in Atlanta on Wednesday. A funeral will be held Thursday at the Ebenezer Baptist Church. A horse-drawn carriage brought Lewis's casket across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama yesterday. Quite a powerful moment. It was there in 1965 that state troopers beat Lewis and other peaceful protesters as they tried to march to Montgomery. Legendary television personality and former KFMB TV host Regis Philbin has died just a month before his 89th birthday. We saw his work on shows like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? But early on, back in the 1960s, 
Philbin was an anchor and reporter here at News 8. These are some of the videos and photos from our archives. For more on his life and legacy, here's Laura Podesta. Regis Philbin was one of the most familiar entertainers on television. He's said to have logged more hours in front of the camera than anyone else in the history of the medium. In more recent years, Philbin was the first host of the very popular TV game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which tested contestants' knowledge of trivia. And it's good to make it your final answer. I'm going to do that. You're right for 200. For 23 years, he served as co host on Live with Regis and Kathy Lee and later live with Regis and Kelly when Kelly Ripa replaced Kathy Lee Gifford. The Bronx, New York native was always prepared with a story, joke, and a smile. He appeared as a guest on countless other shows, including on CBS's Late Show after David Letterman announced his retirement. But now you're leaving. Yeah, that's right. So where does that leave Regis? I don't care. Where am I going to go? I don't know. In a statement, Philbin's family said, we thank his fans and admirers for their incredible support over his 60-year career and ask for privacy as we mourn his loss. Regis Philbin was 88 years old. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. I just loved his quick wit. Yeah, right. and he was so warm and yes. just brings you right in. Like, you just feel like you're hanging out with Regis, you know? He could just time. literally be put into any situation and be successful. Yeah. I mean, whether it was a nighttime game show or a morning mm -hmm. show host program, he will be so missed. Oh, what yeah. a talent. And so many generations will miss yeah. him. So um, our tribute to Regis is get, just getting started this morning. Coming up in the next half hour, we will chat live with a longtime friend of his who worked with him in the talk show circuit. So make sure you tune in for that. Quite a history he had there. Uh, well, quite a career. Still ahead here, I know some of you are wondering what your chances are of contracting COVID-19, say at a graduation party or a family barbecue. Well, it turns out researchers have a new scientific tool to help you calculate that. Plus, we're tracking severe storms that are affecting Mexico and Hawaii right now. The latest on the path of Tropical Depression Hannah and Hurricane Douglas coming up next. And after weeks of protests following George Floyd's death, federal officials are now weighing in on their highly debated response. 